الشير بتاع السيتنج ده ارتجالي <تصفيق> زي ما شفت اقول لكم الورقة الأولى أو البرزنتيشن الأول مع ابتهال عطى المنان هتتكلم عن دور الشباب في الثورة السودانية السلام عليكم في بداية الأسبوع قدمت هذا الموضوع في مؤتمر واست وبرنامج الأمم المتحدة للبيئة كان بعض الحضور ليس لهم دارية كافية ما يجري في السودان وكان الهدف من الموضوع تقديم الوعي لهم وتسليط الضوء على دور النساء والشباب في الثورة الحمد لله تحقق الهدف تجاوب معظمهم الحضور وأصبح لديهم الفضول لمعرفة ما يحدث في السودان أكثر من السابق اقترح علينا تقديم الموضوع باللغة العربية للأسف اللغة العربية اللغة العربية ليس قوية ولكن أحاول أن أقدم المقدمة والخاتمة بالعربي الهدف الأساسي لهذا البرزنتيشن تسليط الضوء على الدور النساء والشباب في الثورة وذلك لمجهودهم المقدر وهذا تقديرا لهم بما قدموه للشعب السوداني خلال الثورة Good afternoon um, I presented this presentation earlier in the week at the um, WASD and UNEP conference, and it was asked of, for us to present in Arabic. Unfortunately, my Arabic is not the strongest, so um, I will be presenting the presentation in English, but I will try to translate the introduction and conclusion. So we'll begin with the outline. So in the presentation, I'll be giving a brief background into the current uprising and then looking at the role of women and youth um, to, in the uprising, both in Sudan and the diaspora. And to understand the significance of their participation, we'll be looking at the historical context in which the activism of Sudanese women has emerged and the role of the youth in rebuilding Sudan. So we'll start off with the background. Um, Sudan's economy has been str struggling for several years now. More recently, anger has been rising over the increasing cost of living and other economic hardships, including steep inflation, removing food and fuel subsidies, and limits on cash withdrawals. As a result, citizens have been struggling to achieve daily necessities such as food, fuel, and cash. The waves of protests which birthed the current uprising began in, on the 19th of December 2018 in Atwara and quickly spread to cities across Sudan. The protests quickly turned from demands for urgent economic reforms into demands for the President Omar al-Bashir to step down. Security forces responded to protests with a crackdown using uh, tear gas, live ammunition to disperse demonstrators, and this caused dozens um, of deaths and injuries. Throughout the protests, their response has continued and intensified, pushing the death and injury toll to hundreds if not thousands. Protests continued for the following months, and on the 6th of April, hundreds and thousands uh, responded to a call to a march to the armed forces headquarters. They gained entry into the area, which is usually restricted, and they there and then began their sit-in. The following day, social media and messaging access was blocked, and power was cut. On the 11th of April, um, President al-Bashir was ousted from presidency, and General Awad ibn Awf uh, assumed leadership of the country as head of the Transitional Military Council. On the following day, he announced his resignation following intense protests, and he chose Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan to succeed him. Tensions then um, continued to rise, and on the 3rd of June, armed forces attacked peaceful and armed protesters at the sit-in. They used heavy gunfire and burned tents with people still inside them. The Transitional Military Council and Rapid Support Forces, also known as the Janjaweed Militia, also opened fire on medical facilities and people seeking treatment. They dumped some of the bodies of killed protesters in the River Nile, and this act was carried, this massacre was carried out on the final day of Ramadan. Um, most of the protesters are fasting and preparing for Eid, and so the following day, Eid became a day of mourning and burials rather than a day of celebration. It was reported that in the massacre, reported that 118 people were killed, 70 were raped, and 100 were injured. Additionally, 40 rivers were um, found that were dumped in the River Nile. Behind me is the name of the 100 martyrs who were identified in the Khartoum massacre. Their ages ranged from 6 to 60, and at least 12 of them were children. It has been difficult getting actual numbers because the um, remainder of for, for the massacre and the remainder of the uprising because many um, people are missing and there have been attempts by the Janjaweed to 
stop documentation and due to as well internet, internet and communication lines being shut down. Hence, it should be noted that the number of people who have lost their lives is certainly higher. From the 9th to the 11th of June, a three-day general strike and na nationwide civil disobedience began. Um, the Sudanese Professional Association published estimates to confirm the success of this. These include 84 to 90% blocking of flights, 64 to 72% blank bank closures, 60 to 94% closure of energy stations. So now we'll turn our attention to the role that the women and youth in Sudan and the diaspora have played in the uprising. People um, participating were from different ages, backgrounds, whether it's political background, ethnic, social, and they all participated in the protest. Um, women and youth dominated and they played significant roles and the revolution is often described as their, their revolution. So women and youth, both in Sudan and the diaspora, have played many similar roles, one of them being their large turnout. Both groups have consistently dominated in numbers at the protest, um, with reports of upwards of two-thirds of protesters being women at some of the protests. They have shown strength in numbers by coming together in their hundreds of thousands to form a single unified voice. With, huge, with their huge numbers comes great diversity. People are coming together regardless of their differences, and they're working together against their common enemy, the regime, and working together towards their common goal, a civilian government. Moreover, they're showing solidarity, they're listening to each other, they're creating spaces where people can express their views, opinions, and experiences. And for many, their voices have been suppressed by the regime. So for example, people from conf conflict areas such as Darfur and the Nuba Mountains have been subjected to heinous human rights violations by Bashir's government or regime, and especially those affected are women and children. In turn, slogans such as We Are All Darfur were developed, and these continue to be chanted at the protests. Women and youth have not only participated, but they've also been leading the way. They have organized and mobilized the wider community and developed chants. The chants reflect their grievances, demands, and they have uplifted and energized protesters across the world. And these are some images demonstrating that. And here we have a prime example of a youth member leading the protests. So what role have they played in sharing information and raising awareness? Well, both women and youth have been proactive in educating themselves about the situation in Sudan and the developments of the uprising. Notably, they've done this with great speed. For example, when al-Bashir was ousted, it was soon announced that he would be replaced by Awad ibn Auf, and he would lead the country as the head of the Transitional Military Council. Um, he announced the suspension of the constitution, he announced a curfew, but he was also known as a key figure behind the violence and human rights abuses in Darfur. So the protests were cut short, sorry, the celebrations were cut short, and people returned to protesting. The protesters have experienced a number of successes, but they remain cognizant about attempts to deflect their attention, disrupt their momentum, and in genuine attempts by the armed forces to meet their demands, as well as the fact that although the face of the regime is changing, the loyalists and supporters who kept al-Bashir in power for all this time still remain. The youth have also been crucial to raising awareness, employing social media as their chosen vehicle. Sharing information about the regime and developments of the uprising has been done with great speed and consistency. They have also exchanged tips as to how people can defend themselves, or for example, against tear gas, how to treat a gunshot wound, cautioning people about the tactics employed by the armed forces, such as mugging, looting businesses, stopping people and beating them as they please. In the diaspora, there are a number of social media accounts which have become go-to sources for people to learn about the uprising. They, they deliver information in a way that is easy to understand, easy to access, as well as providing additional sources where people can learn even more. They have also been clear about the ways people can help, such as attending protests, raising awareness, stressing the importance of sharing confirmed and correct news, signing petitions, writing letters to their politicians, and donating to reputable organizations. This has been particularly important as national media has been censored and the international media has been restricted from entering Sudan. 
The diaspora also holds weekly protests, public lectures, discussion forums, and vigils to raise awareness and show solidarity. Social media has also been used to share the artwork and music created by people in Sudan and the diaspora. So ultimately, the diaspora has served to amplify the voices of people, ensuring that their voices, experiences, and demands are heard. For many, this is the only way that their voices are heard in a public arena due to the regime's restrictions on free speech. So the participation of women in these protests has, was something that turned the international media's attention and led them to start reporting on Sudan's protest several months after they actually began. Um, and there was often a tone of surprise that these Muslim or African women were coming out and leading the way. But Sudan has a rich history of women's involvement in movements, so what we're seeing today is nothing new. Sudanese women are simply continuing the, to assume the roles that they ha always have in their communities and in their country. Um, the women of Sudan are being referred to as Kandaka, a Nubian word which translates to strong women. It was a title given to Queen of the ancient kingdom of Kosh, a region corresponding to modern-day Sudan. The Kandakas ruled over 2,000 years ago, overlooking um, Kosh's prosperity, building pyramids, and leading people into battle. In 1946, 10 years before independence, Dr. Khalida Zahir took to the streets to protest against British colonial rule. So she was arrested and flogged. During, the time, during this time, um, former women's organizations began to emerge as the national struggle led by trade unions intensified against colonial and cultural, um, against colonial authority, sorry. Nurses were the first to break through colonial and cultural restrictions on women's participation in public life, taking to the streets for the first time in 1948 to, to protest. The Sudanese Women's Union was formed in 1952, with their focus resting on health, education, and labor issues. They later expand their focus to look at increasing women's participation in politics. One of the most significant contributions made by the youth is the sit-in. Um, the sit-in, as we mentioned earlier, commenced on the 6th of April after hundreds of thousands marched to the armed headquarters and gained access. And the march there and then evolved into a multi-day sit-in. It actually lasted several months. And the youth ended up appropriating the space for their own uses. And we'll look at what it was like inside. So the sit-in was organized and run completely by voluntary efforts. So they provided basic needs such as food and water, toiletries, mattresses. They even set up temporary toilets. Engineering and architecture students came together to build um, drinking fountains. But they also went further to provide things such as air conditioning. They would regularly clean the inside and surrounding areas to maintain it. And as you can see, everyone chipped in. Free medical care was provided for everyone. Pharmacies and clinics were set up, again, completely by volunteers, and women formed the majority of the medical teams. Education tents were set up to educate homeless and orphaned children. Um, in addition to education, they were provided with food and drink, and they were also engaged in activities for them to enjoy themselves. Um, in addition to the necessities, things like leisure, were catered to, so this is um, a massive screen which was set up so people could watch the Barcelona Man United match. Um, they also set up Wi-Fi and charging points. And they also took into consideration safety. So checkpoints were set up and there were also stations such as public address stations to announce the names of children who were separated from their families at the sit-in. And one of the most prominent features of the, of the sit-in was the arts corner. Artists, musicians, poets, and political leaders from two different par from different parties um, visited the area to entertain and educate. They painted on the walls. They carried out exhibitions. There were nightly performances of theater. And artists were able to share their art, ideas, and messages. And this was particularly significant for people who felt their voices were, were restricted by the regime. So I'm going to start with my final remarks for... I'm going to first give it in Arabic and then in English. كل ما يجري في السودان ليس فقط سياسيا بقدر ما هو موضوع إنساني. الشعب السوداني وضع مطالب واضحة ليس فيها تراجع وهي إزالة النظام، تكوين حكومة مدنية، 
وحاكمت كل رموز النظام في حكم السابق الذي انتهك حقوق الإنسان السوداني وقف دعم المالي وتقديم السلاح للحكومة العسكرية من بعض الدول لم يطلب الصور أي مساعدات مالية ولم, يطل... ولم يطلبوا أي تدخل أجنبي نلاحظ أن دور المرأة مستمر في... فهي تلعب دور مهما في مجتمعها وبلدها ما خلقه الثوار في الاحتصام, في الاحتصام إنجاز باهر في تحويل القيادة إلى صورة مصغرة للمستقبل الذي يريدونه لقد ظهروا منظمة استنثائية التعاون والكرم والإيثار والوحدة الشعب برغم من اختلافهم العرقي فقد نبذوا العنصرية والتميز الديني تشكل المجتمع القيادة خالي من المشاكل ومتحد وقادر على القيادة والوصول إلى الهدف وظهر جليا أن من كان في القيادة كان يساهم بطريقة رائعة من يختلف المجالات والمهارات بكفاءة عالية وساهمت كل شرائح المجتمع قد أثبتت الشباب أنهم بإمكانهم أن يبنوا ويقودوا المستقبل الذي يريدونه السودان يحتاج لكل الكفاءات مثل الدكاترة، المهندسين، المزارعين، الاقتصاديين، أصحاب المواهب وأصحاب التقنيات المعلومات إلى آخره على المهاجرين أن يحققوا النجاح والتمييز أيضا أتمنى أن المهاجرين الذين يتحصلوا على فرص النجاح والعمل أن لا ينسوا السودان وأهله ولا يضيعوا الفرصة الذهبية في تنمية السودان And in English um, what we saw at the sit-in from the youth was something quite remarkable um, um, the situation in Sudan is not necessarily a political one it's a human issue the Sudanese people have made their demands clear number one complete removal of the regime number two a civilian government three trials for all the key figures of the previous regime for their human rights violations and four countries to stop providing um, arms and financing the regime. They're not asking for aid, they're not asking for foreign intervention. As we have seen, the women of Sudan are continuing to assume the role that they have historically played in their communities and in the country. What the youth have created at the sit-in is quite remarkable. They've transformed the armed forces into a headquarter, the armed forces headquarters into a microcosm of the future that they want. They've demonstrated exceptional organization, cooperation, generosity, and altruism. The youth have rejected tribalism, racism, and religious discrimination. Hence, they were successful in creating a diverse community that was united and free of disputes. We saw all those that contributed in the sitting contributed um, incredibly, and they did so with excellence. People of all backgrounds came together, and they did, and everyone had a, had a role to play regardless of their ability or skills. People from all parts of society pooled their knowledge, skills, and resources to build this microcosm. Um, Sudan needs everyone, doctors, engineers, people from IT backgrounds, farmers, economists, all, creatives, all those people have a role to play um, in building the future of Sudan. So what we, as the Sudanese diaspora, especially the youth, can do is excel in our chosen fields. I hope that all those who find opportunities and success don't forget Sudan and its people and use it as a golden opportunity to contribute towards the development of Sudan. Thank you. شكرا ابتهال على التنوير بخصوص اليوث اند الومن دورهم في الثوره اتس ريلي يعني حاجه جميله جدا ان نشوف كيف المراه لعبت دور اساسي في في اشعال الثوره وكان عندها دور رائد في كل مراحل الابرايزنج بنحلم بفضاء اوسع بنحلم بزمن اجمل بلاد ميلاد بلاد ميلاد